Welcome to Around Town. I'm your host, Dick Pat, and a pleasure to help you back and have you back here with us. And now we're in the month of April, so April showers bring May flowers. But in this case, April showers brings Paul Brogan back to the show. And what a nice treat to have him back. Thank you. It's been about five months, I think, or something it's like been that. Been a year. No, 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 no. It can't be that no. long, but it has been a little while. Of course, no. It's. Uh, we got in Concord Theatre, which is your big project and your book that you're writing, and I'm so happy for you. Well, it's you know, it's but, much like the way you feel about, you know, things in the community, the Grange, but all kinds of other mm -hmm. things, that I think we need to preserve some of the things we experienced and mm -hmm. knew and had encounters with for the future. Otherwise, no one is ever going to sit down and write it down and share the story. And then it gets lost forever. Or, yeah. you know, how many people, you know, don't even know Concord was a railway hub, you know, at one point? Because there's really nothing left to really show that at one point we had trains and freight coming through here and we were a real. You did? I thought it was just the Kiwanis Fair train that came through, you know, or something. So, but it's so, there's so much that's lost, and, uh, and nobody teaches Concord history in the no, schools. No. no one really understands that there's a lot more to this community than us being the state capital. And I hate to say it, but you've got the Johnny-come-latelys or the Johnny-on-the-spots that know mm -hmm. everything. Right. They don't know. They don't. No. And when you say, how long have you lived here? Oh, I'm a long-time resident. How long is that? <laughs> Six days? Yeah. Six months, maybe? Uh -huh. you know, but I mean, t combined, we're well over a century. Well, you figure that my grandfather mm. and grandmother built yes. the first house, yes. as I've said many times, on East Sugar Ball Road mm -hmm. back in 1916. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother was born here, and my aunt was born here. I mean, my, fi my side of the family, my mother's side, well, they were all Goes natives mm -hmm. of Concord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, mm -hmm. I just found out reading through some of my mother's history that I found accidentally the other day that my grandmother used to go down to Wentworth Avenue. There was an apartment house, I guess, there for the winter mm -hmm. because on East Sugar Bowl there was no electricity back those oh. days. Uh -huh. So they would go down while they were building the house, they would go down mm -hmm. to Wentworth Avenue and spend two or three months mm -hmm. there so they would have some heat or something mm -hmm. while they built the house. And of course that mm -hmm. back then East Sugar Bowl was not plowed either. Exactly. It was no road. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just it's interesting. So but uh, but I am very happy to see that the Con Concord Theater is going to have some life. Yes. I've already yes. noticed maybe some cleaning up around yes, there. Yes, yes. And I think they're planning to start the actual work this summer yeah. with an eye toward opening next March. Yeah. And um, so I think that that's, that makes a nice section. You know, you've got Red River, Capitol Center, Gibsons, you know, that whole area having some very interesting and, and, you know, things that people actually go to and, and, and fill that area. So they'll schedule mm -hmm. shows for in there that would attract maybe 400 people. Right, yes. Nothing major like they would have at the Capitol Center. No, or even at the auditorium because they've got 800-something well, seats there. So this is sort of filling that in between, sort of like what the Anna Carico used to do. Uh, the Anna Carical Theater that was in the Kennedy apartment the building. What? Hmm? The what? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember yes. that. It was um, a nice theater it was. It was a lovely was theater. Gone. The Concord Music Club was yeah. there. And that's gone now. So, so it is. Yeah, history gone. And that was a good place, you know, piano recitals and that type of thing. So this uh, is going to be able to be used. There'll be a bar. Um, and... and uh, and, well, they're putting in a balcony, which the theater never had a balcony. So there'll be a balcony, and then they'll be able to push all the seats out to have it all open space if there are things. It's retractable, but it's not bleachers. What comes out uh, will have cushion seats, drink holders, the whole thing. They're, they're regular uh, stadium seating. Well, they're not going to show any movies there. Yes. They yes. will? Yes. Oh, okay. The Capitol Center has live broadcasts of from the Metropolitan Opera, from the National Theater in London that are part of their season. 
and they'll attract a hundred people in that enormous cap and they have to heat it you know and everything else so this way they have a much smaller facility to handle the hundred hundred and fifty people that attend these so they'll be showing those they won't be showing regular movies it's not going to compete with Red River uh, so it's not that type of thing but it'll be these special types so of Red River doesn't movies. show the regular some of the regular movies you'd see at Regal or Cinemagic. Oh, no, nothing like that, no. And that's what we need up here, something like a Cinemagic up here. <clears throat> but um, but well, is that going to really compete with the City Auditorium? And I mean, somebody isn't somebody going to get kind of pushed out or something? Well, the City Auditorium is pretty solid in, in anymore. It? it really is. The Friends of the Audi organization that Carol Bagan is... Yeah. Uh, behind and Merwin Bagan, um, they have really pushed it to the point between dance recitals, community players, Symphony New Hampshire, uh, and other groups that come in. I think they're booked something like 200 plus nights a year. Oh, okay. There's something going on in there. Um, <clears throat> and this, you know, is too small to really benefit like the dance competitions and those mm -hmm. things. They need. A, a larger place like either the Audi or the Capitol Center. This is more or less, right now, they have musicians that come uh, and perform. They call it the Spotlight Cafe. And it's held downstairs in the Governor's Hall there mm. on the first floor. But they just sh set up a makeshift stage and seats that are just regular. They're up from folding chairs, but they're not much better than that. And they set that up in there and have them. Well, they won't have to do that anymore. Now they'll have a place where you can actually sit in a cushion chair with a drink holder and have something and watch, you know, concerts. Because the stage is good size at the Concord Theater. They had Roy Rogers and Trigger on stage there one time. And they had, uh, well, back in the 40s and early 50s, the stars used to tour around with their... Um, animals because a lot of those movies played the Concord Theater. They played the the westerns and that type Gene of thing. Gene Autry and Yes, Roy Rogers, Jimmy Dale Johnny Evans, Mac Brown and Dale Evans. Yes. All of those. So those stars would often come and make personal appearances to generate interest in their films. So that the stage is a good enough size and I don't know if the screen can be safe. She paid five thousand dollars for that screen mm. in 1954 when widescreen came in. Before that, she had a smaller screen. But when CinemaScope came in, she went and bought it, and it was a real silver screen because it had little specks of silver to catch the light, so that when the picture was on there, it was sharp and mm. clear. So the projectors are gone, um, and uh, all of that. So. Um, so there's no like hidden mm. reels of film they might have found up in the no or a because closet. those you had to return or oh, you really? have to pay hundreds of dollars for them because they'd send them on to the next theater back and oh. you know you would play it you, usually a movie twenty minutes to a reel mm. so a movie would be usually five or six reels huge enormous you know thirty two millimeter reels and when you finished with it you were responsible to put it all back and send it on to the next theater. Yeah. Unfortunately, if you were the fourth or fifth theater to get it, it was a mess by then because the film would break and have yeah. to be spliced. And I'm sure sometime in your life, I know I have, you've gone to a movie and it jumps a lot. Yeah. And, yeah. You're miss and that's because it's been shown too much and needed to be replaced, but they don't want to pay. The studio doesn't want to pay to make a new one for Concord, New Hampshire. We'll just give them whatever. Yeah. Um, I remember when Old Yeller, uh, and I saw that at the Capitol Theater, and it had played in Boston for two months beforehand, and after running something about 200 times, it came to Concord. The color was starting to fade. The film was brittle, and would, you know, the heat from the projector would make it break, and... So it was, you know, Concord was always considered sort of secondary. Well, you know, we weren't, because they looked at us, what's well, the state capital? They have a lot of people that work in the state, but they all leave at night and go away and, 
you know. Manchester was the big <clears throat> Yes. Nash was second, maybe yep. Portsmouth and they're yep. talking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. so we were just, we were the capital, but we weren't too. I mean, something would play in Manchester. They would have an agreement that nobody within 20 miles could play the movie until they'd finished showing it. Mm. So that, so when people would go down on Thursday night to shopping in Manchester, they might take in a movie while they were down there because they had Thursday nights and we had Friday nights. Yes, I remember And they that. had that agreement between I the two places. I remember that slogan, mm -hmm. yes. My folks yeah. would say Manchester's Thursday night, yep. Concord's mm -hmm. Friday night. Yeah. And it was great. Friday nights in Concord yeah. were just, it was like a big city. There were so many people out. Yeah, and, and go to the giant store on Friday night, too. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. Or, but... It's a shame we It'd don't be have... It would nice to see the Radio City Rockettes come up here or show that showing at that theater or something, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Some big shows like that, you know, because they never come here. Mm -hmm. but still. I don't. I think the Rockettes don't even come to Boston. I think it's they so... They came one time. Did they come one time? Okay. I went to, we went to see them. Oh, did you? Okay. It was probably about... Ten years ago, the was it the Christmas show from yes. Radio City? Oh, okay, yes, yeah. it was. They mm -hmm. went to the Wang Theater, I think. Oh, it okay, was. yeah. And we went down. We had a whole mm -hmm. family of us that went down, and we rented a van. They're amazing yeah. to watch. They just precision dancing at its best. But it wasn't the same as New York City at Radio City. No, even though no. the whole mm -hmm. theme was Christmas yes. in New York. Right. Yeah. They still had a little bit of Boston mm -hmm. in it. It wasn't the same, but it was good. Mm -hmm. You've been to Radio City, oh, Mr. Buck. Yes, yeah. I loved it. The orchestra rising yeah, up yeah, and yeah, all the oh, things that God. That Christmas amazing. show is just phenomenal. Out the nativity is yeah. just, you get a lump in your throat. I you mean, do. it really is emotional. Even though you know the story mm. and everything else, yeah. seeing it depicted that way mm. is just. Oh, um, it's just it's, Out of this world. it's truly spectacular. But you know. I don't think we'll ever see anything like that come to Concord. But you never know. I mean, we, we you know. Well, they've had Greece mm -hmm. at the palace for yes. almost three weeks or so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now Mamma Mia is mm -hmm. going on the road. Now they've got a, re they, they got a second uh, movie. Movie of With Cher. Yep, coming in. Yes, and, yes. But, mm -hmm. And I like I like the music from that. It yeah. It's good. Yeah. But, but, uh, well, that's good. I mean, that really has got some news there, and mm -hmm. you know, and you've got to be excited, and I can't wait to read your book. <clears throat> I will make sure you get an autograph I mean, copy. I'm, well, good, because I'm writing a book on, of course, the Grange history, the fourth <clears throat> copy, uh -huh. that, fourth <clears throat> history of that. But I'll tell you, you've got to be in the mood to <clears throat> write them. Oh, you do. Oh, it's not. It does. You can't just sit down and say write. No. No. And you've got to no. research, read books. I mean, the, I get. In trouble sometimes because I've got so many books, but I have uh -huh. to go back and check my info and all that, and you know. And, and you need to have it quiet around you, yes. no distractions, yes. nobody saying, "Oh, can I bother you for just a minute?" Because it throws or, everything right off. Or, oh, what a mess, mm. Jake. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> but you know, you, mm. if you, I mean, I don't have an, and I, yeah, you're right. You gotta have it quiet. You gotta be able to read and yes. then try to mm. figure out, you know. How are you going to say it? So I've got my first chapter done, mm -hmm. which is based mm -hmm. on the 90 years of the Junior Grange in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. It's a celebration, but I don't know. It's, but it does. I, I enjoy writing, but I wondered how yours was coming. And, uh, well, the research, I, I've spent probably 500 hours on the research, just getting everything. Yeah. Well, because you, you also need to, within the context of the story of the Concord Theater, reference the other theaters in town. And well, there was the Star Theater. Yes, on What ever happened to all <clears throat> that stuff? Mm -hmm. where, where was the theme, where was the theater part in mm -hmm. there? It opened in 1915, and it closed in December of 51. Um, it was owned by Joseph Kennedy, the president's father, as part of his theater chain, Maine, mm -hmm. New Hampshire Theaters, owned the Capitol Theater and the Star Theater. And he would move movies over from the Capitol to the Star wow. because the Star was small. It had about 1,000 seats. The Capitol had about 1,400. Wow. Um, but television was coming in in 51. The mm. drive-ins had opened. Mm. And there was just, uh, 
it, things were just too tight, and so they closed it, and it was sold about a month later. When it opened, it was the most expensive theater built in New Hampshire as of 1915. Mm -hmm. It cost $50,000 to build the Star Theater. Um, and But where did all mm -hmm. the stuff go, though? I'm sure since it was part of Mr. Kennedy's chain, yeah. I'm sure he took the stuff to one of his other theaters. Oh. He had theaters all over Maine, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, mm -hmm. Vermont, and a couple up in Portland, Maine. Wow. So I think he probably moved the stuff. But the setup, <clears throat> though, uh, the setup <clears throat> all backed out with a, the with a thing, <clears throat> the film, I mean, the, the uh, stage. And the all stage, all of that was just taken out, all the oh. seats, everything. Yeah, the marquee, it was this beautiful neon marquee really? out front wow. um, <clears throat> all of that was just and within a year it had been converted the same way it looks now pretty much with the mm. stores and then the upstairs offices where the balcony had been and <clears throat> nothing I mean really left they, for a long time they used to have in tile it said star on the top but somewhere along the mm -hmm. line that got lost or Boy taken out. And then there, on School Street was a movie theater, Kahn's Theater, where the garage is. What used to be the American Legion yeah. was built by Jacob Kahn, a conquered man who mm. arrived in town in 1898 with $2.98 in his pocket, opened that theater in 1914, oh my God. and it was called the Th Concord's Theater Deluxe mm. because it was so beautiful inside. Mm. Yeah, because right next door to that mm -hmm. was a Buster Brown diner. Yes, yes. Yeah, I remember that. Mm -hmm. And then the the Capitol Theater, of course, opened January of 1927 when silent movies were still on, and that cost $65,000 to Shh. build. And that had a Wurlitzer pipe organ in it because you had the organ playing during the silent movies, you know, mm -hmm. the background music. And I don't know whatever happened to that Arthur Martell was the man that played the organ there. Wow. And um, they had ushers to take you to your seats, uh, reserve seats uh, for people that could afford 50 cents. Everybody else, 25 cents, and you got to sit in the balcony. Mm. So that was the place the Auburn Street crowd yeah. went because yeah. they didn't want to go to one of the other theaters, and mm. that was considered the real you know, upscale place because you got the organ recital, you got Burns and Allen on the stage or Jack Benny or a vaudeville act, and then you got the movie and a newsreel, mm -hmm. and then you got more organ at the end of that. So for mm -hmm. 50 cents, you got a whole evening out. Boy, mm -hmm. that's something. But, and the Palace in Pentecook, I included that in the uh, Where was that? That was right as you come down the hill yeah. after the square on the right, right before the, you go over the bridge. It's an apartment house now, right there. But that was 500 seats, the Palace Theater. Oh, and that was gosh, into gosh. the 70s. Yeah. They started playing X-rated movies in the 70s, and uh, Chief Carlson was not happy about that. Really? Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was that was a big brouhaha oh, I bet. over over that coming to college. That was over the, just over the bridge. No, right before the bridge. bridge. Right before. The bridge, yeah. Uh, yeah. The last on the right side as you yeah. went across. Wow. And I think there's still a marker on the door that says this was the site of the Palace Theater hmm. for you know many many years. Yeah, that's something. So yeah. And people could take the streetcar. If you missed the movie in Concord in the 30s, mm. you could take the streetcar to Pentecook and see it for five cents, wow. seven cents in the evening. Isn't that a riot? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, of course, the legislature approved of the $4 million mm. yes. study. Yes, for the railway. Yeah. 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 Was by, we got it by six votes. Well. And I, I, and I was so, because I, I was, oh, I was so upset. Because I wanted mm. that to pass. And I'm telling mm -hmm. you, I had dunderheads in front of me and on the side mm -hmm. that were Republicans who didn't want it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, are you handicapped? Are you, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, disabled? Mm -hmm. Because they're so old that all you could hear was buses, buses, buses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, there isn't a bus that I know of that is handicapped accessible. No, no, no. 
good luck getting on and off that. Yeah, so they, it passed. I'm hoping now that it will go through the Senate and the governor will get it. Well, if we're sincere about ever attracting something like Amazon or I something know. like that, we need to have something in place. That's right. And I would jump on the train to go to Boston for the day. Well, I would too. I, you know, it's a it's easy just to you know well their complaint mm. thing is that they're saying is that well it's fine to go to boston but you go to north station there's nothing that connects north and south together you still got to get mm -hmm. somehow to mm -hmm. get to south station which is true but yeah. still you know i mean it, i don't know i'm just glad that it went through yes. and hopefully yes. we can get mm -hmm. something going it because mm -hmm. we're probably dead for it and it gets through but yeah, I'm just hoping we can get the train. I mean, everybody yes. has the train. Exactly. exactly. Why, is, why are we so reluctant to have a train mm. there? And the number of people that commute, you know, on a train, you can be doing work before you get to the office in Boston. Of course. Which you can't do in the car. Well, you're not supposed no, to. Oh, I know. I see the distracted drivers everywhere. And yes, they've got to upgrade the tracks. And yes. So the high speed course. trains can yes. get going mm -hmm. down through there. But, uh, it, it would be a huge uh, ultimate. And if they want to attract younger people to New Hampshire, that's one way to do it. We can add Kino and all that stuff, but we can't have a train. Right. That's what gets yeah. me. They don't want a casino, but no. we've got Kino, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. It's like mm -hmm. all these scratch tickets and everything else. And, uh, now you're going to run again this year? Yes. Good. Yes, I'm intending to run again. Good. But Ward, Ward, Ward 8 is, a, is mm -hmm. an incumbent, so mm -hmm. hopefully I'll get back Good. in. Good, good. Well, right. no, I mean, you're, you're very focused on, and you understand, because you listen to your constituents. You listen mm -hmm. to what they say, you try to find an answer for them, and you take this seriously, yeah. as though this were a full-paying job. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, people don't realize that, you know, you barely get anything for it, but you take it well, with that same degree of seriousness. You know, $100 a year, yeah. but they take out taxes. We get no mileage. If we do, it's a dollar cents, mm -hmm. dollar and eleven cents. Mm -hmm. But the time they take taxes out, we get maybe a check for seventy five dollars. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Big deal. I, yeah. I mean, I do it just because it's community service, and I, I enjoy doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But who knows? You know, it's going to be a funny year because mm -hmm. of the mess in Washington. But who would ever have believed? I just well, I would have. Wow. Uh, really, most people are so mm. buffaloed yeah. that, yeah. and of course, all the stuff you hear that's going on now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, they used to talk about John F. Kennedy or Ronald Reagan being mm -hmm. a uh, divorcee twice. This mm. guy's three times over, plus all the women he's yeah. had. Yeah. But I don't know. It's just it's sickening. Every night of the news, oh, it's breaking news in yes. Washington, D. our nation's capital. So and so, so mm -hmm. oh boy, it's like okay, same old thing. Well, I just flick on, I record Days of Our Lives, and I check it out in the evening. It's... <laughs> Watching I, Will and... Uh, and all of Paul and, and yeah, the whole Paul and crew and Sonny and the whole gang. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's good escapist um, from the realities of everything we're facing. And ABC, because they got um, groups on Facebook that want all my children one life to live brought, yes, back, brought back but ABC says no because there's no interest you know so but there really is and I think is. even more so when the whole world seems to be just self-destructing I think it's I mean as we have talked before all uh, as the world turns you really believed in the people oh yes. in that town they were real they were and uh, and they always coped and dealt with their problems, and uh, it was a great way to escape from the realities of everything going on around you and to that's, watch them and how they dealt with it. That's why I was so honored and so thrilled to interview Eileen, Eileen Fulton. Fulton. And mm. I think, as you told me, uh, she was shocked yes. because I knew mm. so much about that soap. You were so well prepared. That oh, yeah. was the thing. She, well, I really wasn't, <clears throat> yeah. Well, but you, but you, decades of watching it yeah. uh, gave you a background mm. that the two of you sat there talking as though you were two old friends. It was just very relaxed yep. over at the courtyard by Marriott. I see, yeah. I can still remember. You I went on the road. Lisa. Yeah. Lisa. 
You know, Hughes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 All and, those names. Yeah. You know, Lisa, and I say, uh, yeah, it's a pleasure introducing Lisa or whatever. Yes. And it was. It was, yeah. it was just unreal. And mm. today, I mean, she's been the biggest star that I've ever interviewed. Mm. Mm-hmm. But, and she uh, was gracious and charming oh, and just. And I was so sorry you couldn't come to the show. You had other oh, plans. Yeah. And, uh, but it was, I mean, 350 people that packed in there had yeah. the time of their life. Oh, and I she bet was they did. just, she sang, she told stories, she, oh, I uh, you know, did all kinds of, and she stayed until midnight to sign everybody's picture um, and to pose her pictures because she said, if you've come this far to see me, because a couple of people came from Rhode Island. Oh, yeah. Uh, she said, because it was in Soap Opera Digest, mm. and she said, if you come this far, you deserve to have a picture or have a little of my time to talk, and that's, you don't have that from everybody. No, you don't. <clears throat> so, yeah. anyway. Because Main Street has mm. been busy with uh, trucks parked in the middle. In of the, the middle, and, yes. Uh, I don't like it when they park near a crosswalk because there may be people you can't, you can't see, see. No, you behind can't. there and you have to slow to less than a crawl to make sure that someone's not going to suddenly be right there in front of you. I still have mixed emotions mm-hmm. about that because then mm-hmm. I hear the cobblestones of coming, coming up, up out of the str- yeah. from the, the I think from the frozen ground and from the frost heave kind mm. of thing but some of the bricks on the crosswalks you catch your heel or something i mean i wouldn't want to be wearing high heels why well, i wouldn't look good in them but um but i mean if you had any are kind you of... for mr conkin this year <laughs> goodness gracious <laughs> but if i brought my platforms from yeah. the 70s out yeah you know and that caught in one of those bricks i'd yeah. do i'd be doing disco steps that nobody had ever seen before as i went flailing around the mm. street. I know, so. because it's just, you know, it was cute years ago when it was Pleasant Street yes. Extension. Oh, yes, yes. But now with Main Street and stuff, it's just, mm. I don't know, I still had mixed emotions about that whole mm. thing, but what are you going to do? It looked beautiful at Christmas time. The wreaths yes, are lovely. Was nice, yeah. And, you know, going there. And the tree in front of the State House was lovely this year. Yeah. It looked really... And you didn't have the lighting problems you'd had before. No, no it was really... So good. it really it was, was a, a lovely picture and a lovely tree. Yeah. And um, and the response was great. And I can't wait to see what you do this year. Well, mm-hmm. thank you for your support. I hope to uh, see what happens. Mm-hmm. But. Good. You know, it's just been one thing after another. You know, the, the uh, you know the the health issue there with my knees and mm-hmm. stuff. But you know, I just keep plugging along like an old cow. And just keep on going. You know, <laughs> circle the pasture a few more times. And thanks to Ian who gets me going there. He with does a great show, job. Because he does. Motivates very well. I said before yes. he's like my guardian angel mm-hmm. over there. But. Uh, mm-hmm. But, you know, in the legislature, of course, again, you go there and sit, and sometimes everything is roll call, roll mm-hmm. call. Mm-hmm. They never used to have that. Mm-hmm. But because they don't like the current leadership or whatever, it's, oh, mm-hmm. goodness, roll call, mm-hmm. roll call. And there's our beat that says we're it's done. It's up? Wow. Yeah, I know. Well, I'm available in two weeks if you... <laughs> I'll be glad to return in two weeks. I'm just so weeks. happy to have you back because I began taking it personal. Like Don't, that. my friend. Well, you know how it is. Yes. People say, you know, oh, yes. gosh, not mm-hmm. them again. But hey, we had a lot of people say, yes. hey, I miss you too. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because we always brought up a lot of history. We do. About what was going on in mm-hmm. Concord, things that people had forgot about. Right. Well, right. I never heard of mm. Minnie Proud, you know, and my mm. goodness gracious, no. never as banned. Mm. And the giant store, which you mentioned giant today. Store, yeah. <clears throat> no, mean. you know, people don't remember. Even some people that were around have totally forgotten about it until somebody mentions it and says, Oh my God, I remember that place out in Pentecost. And, and now all these vacant mm. stores are going to happen on the heights yes. and stuff. It's a shame. Yeah, there's only another two weeks for Bonton. Yeah. And, and the Tutti Fruity in the mall went out. To- Toys R Us are gone. Yes. So. Yes. It's... Well, with that in mind, yes. we want to thank Ian for his Yay. super directionship. Yes. I'm smiling. And uh, Paul, it's so good having you back. And thank yes, you. Good to see you. I will put you down for two or three weeks from now. Okay. And, uh, I've been put down before, but the way you do it is fine. Yeah. 
I Sorry. Don't have, I don't have a phone number. You can edit either. that part out here. <laughs> I was desperate. <laughs> Well, I'll Thank tell you, you, I am so happy, and I'll get my calendar out right now. Great. With that in mind, have a great day, have a great Easter to my Greek Orthodox mm -hmm. friends, and we'll see you all soon and around town. I'm your host, Dick Pat.